All right, so for ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to show you guys how to graph this two different ways. All right, and the best way I can tell you to graph inequalities is one thing: forget their inequalities and just treat them like equations. All right. So when we have equations, as we're now right now going to talk about them, there's two different ways we talked about how to graph them. The first way is to set it up into y equals um, mx plus b, or which we call slope-intercept form. Because if you can put it in this format where you solve for y, then what happens, actually, I'm going to keep the inequality there, though. When you solve for y, you then know what the slope and the y-intercept are. So I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides, and I get negative y is greater or equal to negative x minus 1. Then to get y by itself, I divide by negative 1. And hopefully, if you guys remember in your review, whenever you divide or multiply by a negative number, you do what with the sign? Flip it, right? Now you might say, why is that always true? Well, ladies and gentlemen, what happens if I just added the y to that side and then added the 1 to that side? You would have y is less than x plus 1, right? Does everybody see that? If you did not divide by a negative 1 and you just added the y over there to make it positive and added the 1 over there, you would still have y is less than x plus 1. So it's just a different way to solve it. So here's, here's this equation. Now what is our y-intercept is 1. And our slope is what? 1 over 1x one over one plus 1. Okay, So let's graph this equation. y-intercept is at 1. So I'm going to go to 1. All right, And I'm just going to label it 0, 1 so you guys can notice, oh, y-intercept, 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 y-intercept. Then the slope tells us to go up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1. And I look at the sign, and since it's less than or equal to, that tells me it's going to be a solid line. All right, let's go up one to the right one or down one to the left one. Whew. OK, we graphed that one. Now, you might say, you know what, I really don't like solving for y. I like always doing the x and y intercepts. OK, that's fine. You can graph it like that. So if you want to graph the x and y intercepts, remember when we did that, you set x equals 0 for the y-intercept. So you put a 0 in for x. So you do 3 times 0 um, minus y is less than or equal to 4. And again, this is where I'm going to try to just treat these as equations. We'll go back to the inequality sign here in a second. But so what I have is negative y equal to 4. Divide by negative 1, y equals negative 4. And then to find the y-intercept, I do, I'm sorry, the x-intercept, I do y equals 0 equals your x-intercept. So you put a 0 in for y, so you get 3x minus 0 equals 4. x equals um, 4 thirds. So I go down to y, which is negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And my x is going to be 4 thirds. So it would be uh, 1 and 1 third, which would be it looks something like that. All right. Now remember, we're not we're not very too concerned. I always preferred putting this in the slope-intercept form, um, so you guys could kind of always see that. However, if you guys like graphing this way, this is another way to graph it. My original inequality sign, though, is greater than or or um, less than or equal to, so it's still going to be solid. And so there's the graph, right? But remember, guys, we're not looking at just one solution point. It's an inequality. We have multiple solution points. So to find all of our solution points, we have to test it. Right? OK. So we go back to the drawing board, and we say, all right, testing them. So I'm just going to test each equation. And since neither of these equations go through 0, 0, I'm going to test 0, 0. So I plug in 0 in for x and for y. And remember, I want to label these. So that was the first one, right, which is here. So that's x minus y greater than or equal to negative 1. And here I'm going to label this graph 3x minus y less than or equal to 4. All right, so for this one, when I test 0, 0, I say 0 is greater than or equal to negative 1. True or false? True. So since it's below my line, that means all points are true below that line. Then I test the next one, 3 times 0 minus 0 less than or equal to 4. 0 less than or equal to 4. True or false? True. And since it's above this line, it means all points by the line. However, where is it true for both inequalities? Not one, but both of them. Right there. So that's going to be your feasible region. 
Make sense? Wendy? No? no? Where, the, where you test them? What do you mean, how I graph that? Yeah, no, like the second one, that one. How I graph that? Yeah, like how you solve it and then graph it and you get it. All right, well, I graphed it a different way. You could graph it this way. Yeah, and here's where, yeah, so the way I would do this, what I would do is I would actually add the y to the other side. So you'd have 3x um, less than or equal to 4 plus y. And then to get the y by itself, I'd now subtract 4. So my answer would be y, uh, let's look at it this way. So I'd have 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to y. Or I could rewrite that as y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 4. Now, how do you graph that? You go down 4, right? And then you go, your slope is 3 over 1. So you down 4, so you go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. So I just showed you a different way just before the video. But you, I would probably prefer, you know, I think it's easier probably to do it that way for both equations. But I just wanted to offer two solutions. Does that help a little bit? And then once you have your equation, in a sense it's greater than or equal to, it's a solid line. And then you just test it. Plug it in. 0 is greater than or equal to 3 times 0 minus 4. 0 is greater than or equal to negative 4. That's true. So since it's true, you shade above the line because 0 is above the line. Make out a little bit? Okay.